Hello everybody, today we're going to be look, taking a look at change control uh, within the MSM solution. Um, we support change control fully, um, previously known as change management and ITL v3, but ITL4 uh, we, we now call it change control. So what I'll show you today is um, how we raise a change, very very simple, not dissimilar to, to raising an incident in terms of how things look and how they feel. But um, to add, a, add more value, we'll show you um, something called change models. So a change model is essentially a way of uh, a templating and, and, and in many ways automating the process in which a change follows uh, or the workflow that a, that a change must follow. Uh, and it can enforce things like mandatory fields and uh, you can use a model to change um, how, the, how the change uh, reacts and acts. Um, it's quite difficult to explain that verbally, so probably the best thing to do would be to, to, to show you. So I'm going to raise a change, uh, very simple, go to my create new default request and um, raise a, a new change. So this is a very standard change form, but these layouts, you can change these as, as much as you want to really, um, with using XML, so you can add different things onto the, onto the first screen if you want to put that onto the, onto the first screen, you can. You can move things around um, just by using a bit of XML. But um, yeah, as, as if you've seen the, the incident logging video, you'll, you'll remember that, uh, that this looks fairly similar in, in, in design and in layout. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise a change uh, and I'm going to raise a change um, for, um, just for, for, for a software release um, into, a, into, a, into a test environment or into a pre-production environment or into a live environment. So um, I'm going to show you how a change model can, can can, can modify how that looks within the software. So I need to specify raise users, so I'll just use my, my go-to man, that's Ben Smith. So we're raising the change for, for Ben Smith, and now we can start filling in the details of the change. Under classification, we have the service, the change type, uh, the environment, and the description. So the service and the change type are both mandatory fields. We, we must fill those in. If we don't fill those in, we simply cannot raise the change. The environment field is currently an optional field. You'll notice it's white as opposed to shaded blue. That means it's, a, it's an optional field. So we do not need to fill this, fill this uh, field in. But bear that in mind as I progress through this. So I'm gonna keep things very simple, very, very, very accessible. I'm going to specify the service as the software service. Very generic name, of course. Probably not a real world name, but just to, just to keep this simple. So I specify the software service, and I'm going to say that I want to do a, a major release. There we go. So you notice now, but by specifying a major release, that the environment field has now become a mandatory field. So what this software is saying to us, based on the change model, if you want to perform a major release for the software service, you must specify which environment you want to, to do the, the release into. Test, pre-production, or live. I haven't selected anything yet, and you'll notice the, descri the description for the change is, is empty, is blank, the details are blank, and indeed the, the backout plan is blank also. So if I specify that we want to do this to a test environment, simply by clicking test, the change model is now kicking in. So the rules of the software, as defined by us and as defined by you, should you procure the solution, is now driving what will happen. So if we want to do a, a, a major release to a test environment, the, the text description of the change is filled in automatically, deployed to test environment from version, to version from version two. All we need to do is specify what version we're going from, version two. So let's say we go from 8.0 to, um, I don't know, to, to 8.1 or something like that. Something along those lines. And you notice the details. So we have some details. No approvals are required for testing into the, to releasing into the test environment. If I scroll down, the backup plan is a very, very simple. Restore the environment from the previous nightly backup. Simple as that. If I scroll down here, you have your scheduling, so your workload estimate, how long would the change take, your scheduled start times, and so on and so forth. But we're not gonna fill this in for the purposes of today's demo. That's just uh, fairly self-explanatory. And also service downtime, of course. As we can see here at the bottom, if I look at the process workflow, it's a very simple process workflow. So if I maximize this and make it bigger, this change comes in as new, we prepare it, we deploy it, test it, complete it, and it's closed. Simple as that. The risk is risk level four, it's a low level risk because we're deploying into a test environment, so ni nice and simple. Okay, So if I scroll back up to the screen here and change this from test to pre-production, you'll notice that the details have now updated, have been modified. So we're now being told to perform a pre-production data save before releasing the update. This should be used for backout should the release fail. 
and our backup plan is perform a full restore recovery from the pre-implementation save as specified in the details there. So just again, just generic examples, but just showing you how the, the software can automate this process for you. If I scroll down, you notice now that the risk is risk level three, so it's a greater level of risk because we we are doing this into a pre-production environment as opposed to a as opposed to a test environment. And if I look at the process workflow, you'll notice now a slightly more slightly more complex workflow. So it comes in as new, gets prepared. There's an approval point. So in this example, if this um, if this change is rejected, it will go through to closed. In this example, and again, you can build these yourself. Very simple. And there's another video to show you exactly how to do that. Um, uh, but if it's if it's accepted or, or approved, it's deployed, tested, documented, completed, and then and then closed accordingly. Okay. So if I now go to the top of my screen and change from pre-production to live, you notice now that everything's updated again. So at this point, if we want to do a major release to a live environment, we're being told in the details multiple business approvals are required. So we need business approval, financial approval, cab approval, and indeed close down approval. And in the backout plan, we have a backout plan here. So one is to restore the database from a post-implementation save point. The second um, step here is to verify the database integrity by running attach procedure PR348. Okay, so if we go to attachments, we'll notice now that we have that attachment loaded within this change. So again, the change model has taken this attachment from our database and put it onto this change based on the rules within our change model. If I go back to the details here, we can see um, at the very bottom we have a a document there if we need to back it out, back out plan released to live. If we look at attachments again, there's our back out plan released to live. If I scroll down, we can see the risk is now risk level rating one, so it's the highest level of risk, and the state process workflow, if I zoom in, there we go. So we have multiple business approvals as referenced in the, in the, in the change details, so the business approval, financial approval, cap approval, and obviously close down approval as well once the change has been completed. So yeah, very simple mechanism there to, to demonstrate how, how we can, how we can uh, raise changes, but also ensure that changes are done, repeatable changes are done in, in, in consistent fashion. So this is a fantastic thing for, for organizations that are audited, whether that be internal or external. If they say to you, how do you perform major releases, for example, you can say, yep, we have a, a change model for that. If we deploy to, to test or to pre-production or to live, this is the process workflow that's followed. Here is the documentation that we need to, to use if we need to roll back or, or, or fail, the, the, fail the change. And it's nice and clear, it's repeatable, um, it's all, all audited and you can demonstrate to your auditors exactly what it is you're doing with consistency and quality. One final thing I'd like to show you um, is our skills matrix. So say for example, if you raised this change and you weren't sure who you wanted to uh, assign it to, who's the best person to assign it to. If I go to the top of my screen here, I can click on my skills matrix and the software will interrogate our skills skills matrix and show us all people who have skills in release or deployment, uh, their skill levels as well, uh, whether they're available or not. So as an example here, we can see that um, Scott Poynton there, he's a subject expert, but he's currently not available, so probably not the best person to assign this to. Um, we can also see myself, Steve, uh, Stephen West, um, I'm available, but I've only got basic skills, so perhaps I'm not the best person to assign it to. But Alex Hocking there, he's available and he's a subject expert, so he would probably be a, a good place to start. So if I click on Alex there and scroll down here, you'll see the assignee is now assigned to Alex Hocking. So yeah, that's it. Very simple, very high level, just to show you how we can use change models to automate certain things, including risk ratings, workflows, um, details, backout plans, and any uh, attached documentation related to the change. That's it for today's presentation. Of course, as always, stay tuned to this um, website page or our YouTube channel. Um, for any further additional um, product presentations. Thank you very much indeed.